Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to discuss the art of the spike. It is truly a beautiful thing regardless of what side of it you're on. You have to respect a well-timed spike. We also like to refer to this as a meteor smash. Think of volleyball, but a little more humiliating. And that's not a dig at volleyball, by the way. I'm not sure if I remember my first spike, but I'm sure it was a great feeling. And that feeling never really goes away. I mean, unless it happens to you, well then yeah. But you should still respect the spike. There's so many types of spikes too. Each one, their own delicious flavor with their own level of satisfaction. Let's talk about the different types of spikes. By the way, who's keeping count of the amount of times that I'm saying the word spike? I fully expect to see final tally in the comment section. So there's a few different types of spikes. You have your stomp spikes. These are your basic run of the mill down airs. Not the most exotic, but it gets the job done. Ganondorf, King K. Rule, and Dr. Mario are a shining example of stomp spikes. These are your introductory spikes, your entry level, if I may, and they're the most common. Lots of characters have them. Next up, you have your specialty spikes. These are a bit more rare and not as easy to pull off, but they're super rewarding if you can. A couple of characters that come to mind are Wolf with his side B, uh, King Dedede's up B, and Donkey Kong's down B. And I believe Donkey Kong's side B also spikes. Then you have your zestier spikes, the ones that take a little bit of time to wind up. These are my personal favorites because they have that extra dash of salt. These are your typical forward airs or back airs like King K. Rule, again, Mario, and Lucas. These are not the easiest to hit, but they're also not the hardest. In most cases, they're going to require some sort of timing as you're going to need the hit at the end of an animation with the end of your sword or weapon or appendage. Why is spiking important? Good question. If you're aiming to become a better player, it's a critical technique to learn, mainly because you can pick up those early kills if you can establish stage dominance. Toss your enemies off, and you may be able to pick up KO around 40 to 50% with a well-placed meteor smash. If you're happy playing the game as is, that's also okay. How does one even learn how to spike? Another good question. Seems dangerous. Jumping off the stage, a perfectly good stage we're going to jump off of. Isn't the goal of Super Smash Brothers to stay on the stage? Yes, but you'll never get those flashy kills by keeping your feet on the ground. Now go jump off into the abyss. It's the only way you're going to learn how to fly. Okay, but seriously, if you want to learn how to get good at landing meteor smashes, the first thing you want to do is learn how to recover. There's no worse feeling than going to deny your opponent the privilege of life only to not be able to recover back to the stage afterwards. It just becomes infinitely less impressive. Here's some tips for learning to spike or improving your spike game. Number one, what character are you playing? Some characters have meteor smashes, some don't. Some have multiple, like Donkey Kong has four meteor smashes. What the hell? But first you need to establish if your character has a spike. If they don't, drop them immediately. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe. If you're completely new to this, here's a list of characters that are easy to learn with. Donkey Kong, the leader of the bunch, has, like I said, four goddamn spikes. This is not a drill. You can use his down air, you can use his forward air, his side B, his down B. The reach on his forward air is pretty lengthy. The down air is probably the easiest to land, and Donkey Kong has a pretty good recovery, so you can just go for it. Next up, we have Mega Man, whose Meteor Smash is pretty unique, because Hard Knuckle actually detaches his hand from his body, so it requires some spacing. Also, you don't have to short hop in some cases, because you're going to want to be well over your opponent. Also, Mega Man is pretty light, and his recovery is decent with Rush. The hitbox is smaller, but it's just going to take some practice. Then we have Samus, who is generally a well-rounded character. She's floaty, has projectiles, and has a versatile kit. So give her a go. Her down air is a pretty nasty spike, if you can land it. Mario, another well-rounded fighter. Mario's forward air is also one of the more satisfying Meteor Smashes to land, at least in my opinion. I did a whole video on this uh, on 
the most satisfying attacks to land. Mario is on there. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description for you. Last up, we have Cloud. If you're looking to play a sword fighter, Cloud is the easiest one to pick up. His spike is a little tougher to hit because you have to catch your opponent at the end of the forward air animation with the tip of the sword, but you can do it. I have faith in you. So those are five decently well-rounded characters that are easy to pick up if you want to get on that Meteor Smash game. Tip number two. So your character has a spike. You've established this. How good is their recovery? The worse the recovery, the riskier it's going to be to pull off, but those are the best ones. The real crowd pleasers. Then there's Wolf, who can simultaneously spike and recover at the same time, which is just not right. Don't go chasing that puppy. But you're gonna wanna practice recovering a lot. Jump off the stage and try to recover over and over and over again. Tip number three, practice short hopping. Not every Meteor Smash is going to come from a short hop, but knowing how to execute quick definitely helps. There's gonna be a lot of practice involved because there's endless matchups and each character has their own recovery. Just be patient, get that experience through trial and error. Now please enjoy this short montage of me dunking on my opponents. So there you have it, the art of the spike. Meteor smashing your enemy into oblivion is such a satisfying feeling. Now just to recap, if you're looking to improve, you're going to want to do the following. Number one, pick a character with a meteor smash. If you don't know of any, use one of the characters that I noted earlier. Number two, practice recovering, it is critical. And number three, practice short hopping because you don't want to telegraph an attack from a mile away. Before we go, I have one question for you. Which character has the best spike? Drop it down in the comment section. But that's it for this video. I hope you either found it useful or entertaining or both. If you're new to the channel, I cover a lot of Smash and Nintendo in all forms, whether it be gameplay, tutorials, character breakdowns, fun videos, news, whatever. So if that's something that interests you, kindly hit that subscribe button, and if you want to take it a step further, you can ring the notification bell as well. But if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. It helps a lot more than you think it does, and be sure to check out some of my other great content. I do stream a couple times a week on Twitch. I'm also on Twitter, so if you'd like to go 
Follow me on those, uh, there's links in the description. I recently dropped my first couple pieces of merch if you wanna support the channel. All money will go towards improving content and equipment, so there'll be a link in the description for my merch as well. But thanks for watching, have an awesome day, and we will see you in the next video. Later.